Correction of refractive error should no longer be considered the only aim of refractive surgery, as almost any refractive error can now be corrected fully. The final refractive surgical frontier is the challenge of correcting presbyopia. Currently, there are two main surgical approaches to correcting presbyopia, monovision and multifocality. The first attempt to create a multifocal cornea using an eczema laser was by Meditech in 1991 using the MEL-60 eczema laser. A small superior zone was intended for near, while the majority of the profile was intended for distance. Since then, other multifocal ablation profiles have been used such as creating a central area for distance vision with a mid-peripheral area for near vision or steepening a central area for near vision, leaving the mid-periphery for far vision. Multifocal and accommodative intraocular lenses have also been designed and are being used. But, while an overall improvement in visual acuity at distance and near has been recorded for both multifocal ablation profiles and multifocal IOLs, safety and quality of vision have been compromised to some extent. The underlying problem with any multifocal presbyopic correction is that the brain is not wired to interpret multiple images in the same eye. And so there's often a very long neuroadaptation period required. On the other hand, the brain has been naturally programmed for millions of years for binocular vision to suppress the blur from one eye or the other which is why monovision is naturally tolerated by many patients. The amount of induced myopia required in the near eye increases with age, which increases the cross blur perceived, decreasing patient tolerance, increasing distance blur, and compromising intermediate vision. Here we present specialized MEL-80 nonlinear aspheric ablation profiles designed to increase the depth of field and implemented together with a new micro-monovision protocol based on the principle of monovision. In presbyopia, the loss of accommodation means that the near vision in both eyes becomes blurred, leaving the patient needing reading glasses. The ideal solution would be to be able to increase the depth of field of each eye so that each eye could see clearly at distance, intermediate, and near. So far, the nonlinear aspheric profiles have been shown to increase the depth of field, but not enough to give the patient clear vision at all distances far to near. In order to give the patient good reading vision, the non-dominant eye is slightly shifted towards myopia. This results in one eye being clearly focused for near vision, but only slightly blurred at distance, and the other eye being clearly focused for distance vision but only slightly blurred at near. The increased depth of field in each eye means that there is a region where the range of clear vision overlaps, known as the blend zone. The result is that good binocular near, intermediate, and distance vision can be achieved with a lower degree of anisometropia than traditional monovision, which we refer to as micro-monovision. Therefore, much less suppression is required, and there is no dissociation between the eyes. In traditional monovision, the depth of field of each eye is comparatively smaller, meaning that the near eye needs to be more myopic for the patient to read comfortably, and leaving a gap between the range of vision of the two eyes. This replaces the intermediate blend zone with a blur zone. This makes traditional monovision much less tolerated than laser blended vision. Published reports found that traditional monovision was tolerated by about 60% of patients, whereas laser blended vision, where the relative blurring in each eye is reduced, has been found to be tolerated by about 97% of patients. The surgery itself is identical to a standard LASIK procedure, so the risks are very low compared to producing surgical pseudophagia. In this example, the flap is created using the Visumax femtosecond laser. Suction is applied to the cornea, and the pressure is low enough for the patient to see throughout the procedure. 
The bubble layer is created from outside to in, so that the patient can fixate on the flashing light, taking about 20 seconds to complete the flap. The Visumax automatically centers the flap on the Purkinje reflex. The flap is then lifted by separating the bubble layer, the ablation is carried out, and the flap is replaced. In a prospective study for both myopic treatments up to minus 8.5 diopters and hyperopic treatments up to 5.75 diopters, the combined distance and near binocular visual outcomes were found to be excellent. 98% of myopic patients could see 20-20 at distance and read J5, which is newsprint, at near. 95% of hyperopic patients could see 2020 at distance and read J5 at near. The fusion between the two eyes was confirmed by the finding that binocular distance vision was statistically significantly better than the monocular distance vision of the distance eye alone. This demonstrates the presence of neural summation between the images from the two eyes, despite the relatively blurred distance image in the near eye. To illustrate the increase in depth of field, the near eyes in the hyperopic group had a mean refraction of minus 1.32 diopters. So one would expect the mean uncorrected distance vision to be about 2070. Actually, it was 2044 better than expected, corresponding to a nominal distance refraction of only minus 0.85. For the near vision, an average add of 2.25 would be required given the average age of 56. However, the patients were able to comfortably read newsprint with an add of only minus 1.32 diopters. This range demonstrates an effective depth of field of 1.4 diopters. In summary, the use of nonlinear aspheric profiles that increase the depth of field of each eye enables the difference between eyes to be greatly reduced, increasing tolerance, providing continuous good vision from near through intermediate to distance objects, and all this using standard extraocular LASIK surgery, optimizing both patient satisfaction and surgical safety. <laughs>